Okay, here is the TV oscilloscope, another one I just made. And and right, right here is the waveform. We got a sine wave going into it. 24 volt sine wave, 60 hertz. And it's not finished yet. It's basically what it does is, is it's not using a push pole. You want to use push pole so it can not draw the heck out of your testing circuit. Here's a circuit we're going to use later on. This is why we have just ignored this right now because this is all the thing we have right there. Because I have them ordered. It's coming in sometime soon. They're going to go for it. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll we, we create the signal that you input into it. I actually don't recreate it. This is called an amplifier, but basically why they call it an amplifier it's not going to come out the same voltage not as you input in they can input like 20 volts and it won't come out 20 volts because the collectors uh, are less 12 positive negative 12 and you would have to play around with some resistors here on some of them you may not need your 20 ohms for it and it's also I tested it with voltage writer did did do a uh, what is it 100 ohms and did five of them on each side for so the 500 ohms on the bottom 500 ohms on top with them all in parallel that gives you 20 ohms and I didn't and then, and then, and then they're like three watt because 100 ohms at 12 volts is less than three watts and. The 20 ohm right there, I used a 240 ohms at, what was it, 5 watts? I can't remember what the wattage of that one was. Anyway, I know it's high enough to uh, handle 12, so it, it won't do it. Anyway, if you, if you just input a signal into the yard, make sure you have a power resistor in series of your coil. So it doesn't break your testing transformer. It's here. Or the, or burn up the coil, and you're gonna if you put too much resistance, this this waveform be real tiny. Put too low resistance, uh, it could it could go over, could go off the screen, or it could or it could uh or it could burn up. Anyway, it does heat up a little bit. I don't know what wattage that turns the resistor I put in series with it. It's so 110 ohms, not very much, but it, but it's enough to uh, to show up on the screen there. And and this is basically just uh, basically just driving directly to the coil. I haven't got the push pole on there yet. I'm gonna be trying some stuff to the push pole. We're trying to see if I can put an off amp on it. See if it's gonna be simple. Well, simple to put an op amp on there and give it better uh, impedance because the op amp has like 10 has bag had repeaters and mega ohms. The mega the, to, that would help on your circuit, make it where it won't interfere with it. You see, if this here push pole they cannot go high, very high in resistances. The, 10K is not very much of resistance for your circuit. And it may, if you try measuring other stuff besides, uh, other stuff besides uh, power transformers or anything like that, it could, it, it could, could, it could, could make the whole waveform not look right or make the circuit act up. Because when you probably put that anywhere, uh, uh, point it, probe it into inside anywhere in your circuit, it will lower the resistance, or it could take up the, it could suck up some some of their voltages that you're measuring into it, and just so the rest of the circuit don't get the voltage. So what we try to do is try to make it better by doing that. I'm gonna got a breadboard, a tiny breadboard. They can, it's ideal to use a breadboard because then you can 
unhook the hook the wires from it. The wire is there. The wires will do do is then they'll hook into the breadboard and hook to the op amp. The op amp will do is it'll amplify it. They'll have a will have a potentiometer. In fact, if you don't want to do it by op amp, you can do it a little bit better than, than this. As I said, I forgot. What else you could add on between the push pull? You could add a variable resistor right there. The highest resistor you can get. Then that there will do is let you vary out the impedance. But the thing is, you get so low in impedance, this waveform right here will be real small and hard to read. It'll be such a small waveform. But, the, but if you get op amp, the op amps usually amplify it by gain if you, if you use two resistors and then make a feedback loop, negative feedback loop, you can get a gain and it can amplify it. And you can use other op amp to control how it trim, how it turns the push pole on. Usually when they use push poles, usually they don't just put a resistor and that's it between the push pole, like using two transistors and a resistor. Usually what they use is an op amp with it. Because the op amp will try to control, try to make the two inputs whatever it can to I can't remember where it was, but even out so be equal, I think. I can't remember where it was. But anyway. But that'll be later on, and we'll try that. Oh, I already got that order too, the op amp. Thing is, I, I would, thing is, you want to know a high skew op amp. I have no idea of how well it'll handle AC on it. We'll have to uh, give it a try. Signal ground goes in there. This this here why we have those two resistors like that, that's for the virtual ground. That uh makes make, makes it less both positive and negative and it splits twelve volts into half. The twelve volts will now become uh six volts. That's in the middle there. So it can go only Six no, no higher than six volts. This is sometimes you might have to do is you might have to play around with the resistors a little. So what you would have to do basically what I would do is I would to make sure we do try some resistors like this, and then and then connect one in one in into the virtual, not virtual, vertical coil, it's ground there, and then. Choose this one from positive or negative, or maybe both if you want to, if you wanted to try it that way. You see how far on the screen it goes down from, up or down. I'll tell you if you got a good resistor in series with it. If it goes off the screen, it's too, too low. If it hardly moves, it's too high. And that's basically it. Oh yeah, another thing I was gonna show you, what I did. The this TV here come with one of these here, come with one of these uh, M these TV old style TV transformers that are used to convert the the 300 ohm antenna to a 75 ohm a coax connector. I took took it apart and I took the transformer off of it. It's not a big transformer, it's a ferrite core with, with some tiny wires on it. I thought man I could use it with something else, but it has real low resistance on it. It's just like the wires are just uh, wrapped around with a little wire and not very much on it. So there's no use to keep that. But anyway, what I did is I, is, I, is I did that and I was able to move the middle single pin from it. When I moved the transformer, I was able to move the single pin 
and and uh and be able to screw it into the case there with a self tapping screw. And then also we got on, on these two two uh screws here, those are the input signal pins as you can see. There's a 110 ohm resistor. I don't know what the wattage of it is. You want to make sure if you test it with anything or anything like that or do it with any one of them. You make sure you know what the wattage is and you know what, what your resistor is. Because it could burn up if you don't uh, get the low, too low wattage ones. So I did the screw connectors. I soldered wire to it. To the bottom of it and it goes into there right now it's just going directly to the coil later on it's going to go to the push pole in the ground the virtual ground with the two resistors well actually 10 because there's, a, because there's five on each side that make up two resistors well that's it for now will we make another video when we get push pull into it and other stuff. I see that this 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 here is gonna work pretty well. It actually worked better than the other one I used to have until I accidentally knocked the wire on the circuit board and and melted a hole in the amplifiers chip. So what I did to do for that happened I put cardboard in there and I also cable tied the the transistor and other the ground resistors to the to the cardboard. This is so that they never touch the short out or touch the TV circuit. That's something you do not want to do. You do not want to touch the TV circuit. Cause not only that, the 12 volts could go into the dam or something. It's 12 volts is 12 volts. And it just turned off. But basically some TVs will do this. They turn off like that. It's because there's nothing, there's no signal going into it. I believe. That's what it is. It's all signal on there. I'm just trying to tune to a channel that's not even there. You can't even tune channels on these TVs anyway anymore because because the way they convert everything analog to digital. Or the ATSC, it's an NTSC TV. It's a type of format for television. And as you can see, the sine wave is pretty good. Looks pretty well drawn on this TV screen. You could use another put another transistor on 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 the sine the sawtooth. But I, but I just prefer to use one since it's not required. Basically what this is, is, is we're basically plotting uh, a single signal in XY mode all the time. It's done, everything's done in XY mode on it. Because, because it, it uses a solid tooth. The solid tooth makes, makes the waveform plot on the screen just like it is when it gets it. Just as received. This is just like a CRT oscilloscope, except the CRT oscilloscopes they have they have metal plates and not a coil. And then, then if they have metal plates, they also have to have higher voltages, like in hundreds of volts, in order to move the beam from one. From one end to the other. And there's that's basically how it's gonna work. Hopefully we hopefully when I get the, the push pole in there, it works with those transistors. I believe it will. I also got some heat sinks coming in too soon. I got a heat sink on the one end there. And and it, and it keeps it cool as they heat up at all. Probably doesn't need that heat sink. 
the way it doesn't heat up at all, but, but basically, but should have it there just in case it does heat up. Maybe it's because, because at the sense it's uh, sending like a alternating signal into it, it's not making it generate that much heat since it's, since it's changing. If, it, if it's probably steady on all the time, it's always flat on without changing, like a line that goes from that goes across the screen like that, instead of what it's doing right now, it'll probably matter. Well, that's it for now. So, stay tuned for the push-pull part and, and uh, stuff I'm going to try doing to it. Thanks for watching. If you like it.